I'm going to start off straight in saying I find it very interesting because every character in this film, it's the first time in a while that they, for me, they've all been self-aware of how culpable, culpable they are mm. in what has uh, transpired. That's a smart thing for you to say, actually. I think they are extremely self-analytical and they... It's one of their most charming attributes, actually, is that none of them are so pig-headed as to think they know what to do mm. next. And I think that's part of what I like about all the characters, is even Georgette, Julianne's character, who you think has got it all together, she's in a way the most vulnerable yeah. of all of them. And um, it, uh, that's, I think that's well said. Yeah, I mean, Georgette, I mean, the, the, all the characters, but I was just thinking of Georgette, like, someone who could really like wrap them themselves in their own righteous victimhood mm -hmm. somehow is like actually she even when took you get herself in to there, task for her yeah part, her you part know? of it and yeah. and like Maggie being so sure that she's right about everything and then discovering that she she knows very little about how they I, I mean I think that f that's just having well dimensioned characters too. Mm -hmm. Well, Maggie is very, you know, she's multidimensional because it is, like you're saying, controlling, but at the same time she's very aloof, which is a weird thing yeah. to kind of portray. Right, yeah, she's, um, yeah, Maggie's, um, Maggie is kind of, I based it a little bit, this is on a friend of mine who is, uh, who's one of my favorite people, and she utterly is comp so moral and so, sure of herself but it's by a rule book that nobody else has mm -hmm. but she will not break her codes but the codes seem to be a little arbitrary a little arbitrary i mean she was just very flagrantly dated three people at once <laughs> and she had no problem with it and i said well don't you feel bad and she said well, why would, and I said, don't you want to, shouldn't you tell them about each other? And she said, well, that would just make them angry, but you have to recycle that. And yeah. I was like, well, it's like this kind of, but she's so untroubled in the way she moves through the world, and I, I love her. Anyway, that's too much. I was devastated when I found out she was dating two other guys as well. I, I know, know and me too. I know, I, mean, I know. We were both oh. cast aside, I know. It's I mean. a, it's well, a you know, as long as I know now. Yeah. yeah. And now you're both New Yorkers. Yes. So is it still kind of magical kind of filming everything here? Definitely. Now? Always. Definitely. There's not, I mean, you know, to get to do a scene walking through Washington Square Park or to get to have lunch at some great restaurant, some weird little diner that I've been eating at for 20 years while I'm working. Yeah, great. It's, it's such a wonderful feeling. Yeah. Um, especially I, growing up loving Woody Allen movies mm. is also an interesting thing because you fall in love with the tone and mood of those movies. And this film you know, is definitely, uh, you know, a, a, a son or daughter of those films, you know, I mean, yeah. without, the, it owes a debt to those movies, and I love those movies, I'm happy to pay that debt. Yeah, I mean, also New York's just so bloody photogenic, it just looks great. I mean, I, I think it's, you know, it's like Marilyn Monroe, you just like can't go wrong, it just looks great. The same thing going for having to, you know, having another chance to sit down with like Wallace Shawn even for a small second oh. scene. That was a pleasure.